Functions can return closure as output. The closure that is being returned must be one of fn, fn mute, or fn once. Oftentimes, when you return a closure as output, you'll also have to use the move keyword to transfer ownership of the variable that it captures. Let's look at an example. Let's start with fn. Let's call this f of fn. We'll first declare a variable that it's going to capture, let b of type i32 equal to 1. Next, we'll create a closure that takes in a single input, x of type i32, and then we'll return another i32. We'll do this by adding this input x with the variable that it captures, b. So what is the type that we need to specify over here? Since this will be a fn trait, we'll say input fn. This fn trait will take in a single input i32. This is the x that you see over here, and it's going to return another i32. This is the part x plus b inside the closure. Now since we're returning a closure that implements the fn trait, it captures the variable by its reference. So this closure can be called more than once. But this variable will be dropped after this function is done calling. So the variable that is being captured inside the closure might outlive the variable that it references. In this case, the variable that it references is the variable v. After the function f of fn is called, it returns a closure and it drops this variable b. So when we try to call this closure, it points to an invalid reference, which is b, but b is already dropped. And to see this, if we try to call this function inside the main function, let's say let f be the closure by calling f of fn. Try to compile a contract and we get an error saying this closure may outdate the borrowed value v. So to fix this, we need to specify that the closure is going to transfer ownership of the variable b from this function into the closure by using the keyword move. Although the fn trait captures variable by its reference, when we return a closure as output, we often need to use the move keyword to transfer ownership of the variable that it captures, whether it's captured by reference or by the value. So now let's call this function f. Execute the code and we get f of 1 is equal to 2. Now since the fn trait captures variable by the reference, we can call this function f more than once. Let's call the function f twice inside the main function. Execute the code and we get f of 1 is equal to 2 printed out twice. Now because the closure that implements the fn trait can be called more than once, sometimes the variable that this closure captures cannot be returned from the closure. For example, let's say f of fn string and it's gonna import fn you'll try to return a string. We'll first create a variable that it's going to capture. Let's call this s is equal to hello dot to string. And then we'll create a closure. We'll say print ln and then print this string s. Since here we're returning a closure that captures the variable s, we need to move the ownership of s into the closure for the same reason that we saw above over here. The variable that it captures must live longer than the closure. To fix this problem, we'll transfer the ownership of the string s into the closure. And now since the closure owns this string s, what happens if you try to return this string s from the closure? Try to compile the contract. The error says it cannot move out of s a captured variable in a fn closure. What it's saying here is that this closure takes ownership of the string s. Since this closure implements the fn trait, which means that we'll be able to call this more than once, we cannot transfer this ownership of string s. If this closure was able to return this string s as output, and transfer the ownership, then we won't be able to call it more than once. If you wanted to be able to call this function more than once, we will need to copy this string s. We do this by calling the function clone. Return a copy of the string. However, the original string will remain inside this closure. Next, let's look at an example of a function that returns a closure that implements the fn mute trait. Let's call this f of f of fn mute. Let's first create a variable that it's going to capture. Let's create a string. Let's create a mutable string. And that s is equal to a mutable string. And then let's create a closure. Inside this closure, we'll append a crab emoji. Now again, because we're returning a closure and the closure captures a variable, to guarantee that the variable that it captures lives at least as long enough as the closure, we'll need to transfer the ownership of the variable that it captures. So we'll put a move keyword over here. Move the ownership of the variable that it captures into the closure. Okay, so now what type do we need to specify over here? Here we're returning a closure that captures variable by a mutable reference. So this will be impl fn mute. This closure doesn't take any inputs, so we'll put a empty parentheses. And it also doesn't return any outputs, so we don't need to specify any output over here. After we append the emoji to this string, let's print this out. Print ln. 
For the same reason that we discussed over here, we won't be able to return this string guess. Since a closure that implements the fmu can be called more than once, if we return this string guess at the end of the closure, then it would transfer ownership, which means that we won't be able to call this closure more than once. And therefore, if we wanted to call this function more than once and also return a string, then we will need to return a copy of the string by doing s.clone. But for this example, we won't return a string. Okay, let's call this function inside the main function. So let's say that f is equal to f of fm mute. And then let's try calling this function f twice. Call it once and then call it again. Since the closure that it returns is fm mute, you'll need to prefix this variable f with the mute keyword. Okay, let's execute the code. And we get fm mute hello with one crab emoji. And then next time we call it, it returns hello with two crab emojis. From this example, we can see that the string s lives inside the closure. When we call this closure once, we saw that the first crab emoji was appended. When we call the second time, the second crab emoji was appended. Let's move on to the last example. The last example is a function that will return the closure trait fn once. fn once means that it captures variable by the value t, and the closure can be called at least once. So let's call this f of f fn once. Let's first create a string that s equals hello dot to string, and then we'll create a closure. Inside the closure, let's print this s out. Print ln fn once, and then we'll return this s. You'll need to move ownership of the string s into this closure, so we'll prefix this closure with the move keyword. And the type of the closure that we're returning is fn once. Impl fn once. The closure trait that implements fn once must be called at least once, but it doesn't have to be called more than once. Hence, after this string s is transferred into this closure, we can return it. So over here, we'll say we'll return a string. Now notice the difference between this example and the example that we see over here. Over here, to return a string, we had to copy it. But for a closure that implements the fn once trait, we can return the string that it captures. Now let's call this function inside the main function. Let f equals f of fn once. This will store the closure inside the variable f. And then let's call the closure f. So we can call it once. And when we call this, it will return a string called s. So now this s will store the string having the value hello. The ownership of this string s has transferred over to this variable s inside the main function. So we cannot call this closure f more than once. If you try to call it, the code will not compile. Since the ownership of string s that is declared inside here first moves inside the closure. When we call the closure, it returns as output and the ownership of the string transfers over from the closure into this variable called s. So if you try to call it again, the ownership has already transferred, so we cannot call it again. Okay, let's execute the code again. And we get fn once hello. So in this video, I showed you some examples of how to return a closure as a function output. When you return a closure as function output, you'll need to specify which closure trait that you're returning. It's either one of fn, fn mute, or fn once. In most cases, when the closure that you're returning captures a variable, you'll need to prefix it with the move keyword. 